Okay, so you keep telling me about parcels and strings, but I think that's probably not how airplanes actually work. So how do they actually work? Okay, good question. So our job in producing an airplane is basically to make some device in some black box, right? I'm going to draw the black box. And it needs to be an airflow benderator such that air comes in this way and somehow air comes out this way. I don't care what's in the box. How do we build what's in the box? Well, the simplest way to build what's in the box is to just have a simple curved surface, right? Turns out the air will naturally follow the curved surface. It will follow the curved surface on the bottom because it has nowhere else to go. I'm a little confused about the box. What is the box? Is this like the black box that they put in the airplane? I'm sorry. Let's, let's do this again. <laughs> so what I really need to build is something that takes an airflow coming in this way and produces an airflow coming out that way. Okay. And I don't care what's inside of here. This is just whatever I need to do. And anything that produces this effect will, produce, will work. The easiest thing I could possibly build to accomplish this is a curved surface over here. And we're looking at it through the side, right? Mm -hmm. So the air below this surface will follow the surface, excuse me, because it has nowhere else to go, right? It is being pushed by the surface. The air above will follow this surface because air and water and fluids naturally follow surfaces because of something called the Konda effect, right? Which is that if I'm squirting air or water or something along a surface like that, there will be a lower pressure here because the air gets entrained and sucked down. We can deal with the, there's, there's actually interesting physics to talk about here, but it's something that can be very easily demonstrated by holding a glass in a stream of water, right? The air, the flow will stick to the curve up to a certain point. And okay. then after a certain point, it will come off the curve. Okay. So we can make use of that to curve this motion of the air. And so basically all that you do to create a wing is a curved surface like this. Now there are two interesting points about it. First of all, you have probably been told that wings are designed in the shape of a so-called airfoil. And you've probably been told that an airfoil looks like this. And you might have been told that this is a magic shape. Turns out this is not a magic shape at all. Um, so imagine a fish. In fact, imagine a fish viewed from above. The fish looks like this. It's longer at the back than the front, and it has some fins and some fins over here and little eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very streamlined shape for moving through a fluid, be it water or air or whatever else. As the fluid flies past it, it is cleaving asunder the fluid rather abruptly. Not too abruptly, or the fluid will go zooming off in this direction, but it can cleave it asunder pretty abruptly in order to allow for it to pass. On the other side, it is relying on the fluid being able to follow its profile back and reunite. Why is it relying on that? Because otherwise, it would be producing turbulence where the fluid glances off its side and produces this low pressure area here, which would produce a lot of drag. It's not streamlined. Would that happen if it was going faster or slower or? No, it would happen if this angle were bigger. So if we designed an alternate fish. Like a puffer fish? Yeah, well, maybe a puffer fish when it's puffed. Yes. Yeah. If we designed a fish that looks like that, then the fluid would flow past it. And then over here, the fluid would just glance off and create this low pressure area, which would pull the fish backwards. Hmm. So the fish has to, and this angle at which it can rely on the flow to follow it back is more gentle than the angle that it was able to get away with it to cleave the flow apart, right? So the flow comes back nicely this way. And in between, there's a gentle transition, right? 
Okay. And so this is the basic streamlined shape. Some curved shape where the biggest part of it is more to the front than to the back and with a nice streamline in between. Mm -hmm. So if we wrap a fishy shape, now you should just think about a fish. If a fish, that this is a straight fish, right? But if a fish is swimming, it's likely in a, some kind of S shape. So if you imagine wrapping the fish shape around that S shape, you get this new interesting shape that's produced by the combination of the S shape and the streamline of the fish. In the same way, because our wing has to contain stuff, right? It has to contain beams and struts and whatever to keep it in one piece. It can't be just a piece of cardboard. We can imagine wrapping around it a streamlined shape, right? Mm -hmm. And this wrapped streamline is basically creating the airfoil. But you're like, oh, wait. You now, what is an it. airfoil again? The airfoil is just the shape of a wing, right? It is this very canonical shape that when you cut a wing in half, you get this shape. It's flatter on the bottom than it is on the top, and it's plumper in the front than it is in the back, and it is rounded in the middle. So it's just that shape of the, of the cross-section of the wing. It's not the whole wing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And we'll show you an actual wing in a minute. But there it's more, right? So remember when we said that as we fly slower, we want to create more circulation. Faster, less circulation. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Well, one way is when we fly slower, we can reconfigure our wing. We can bend it into a slow wing shape that has more curvature, right? It turns out that that's very difficult to do. Like a, an actual flexible wing, that's something that NASA would love to be able to do, but it's right now almost science fiction because it just ends up being complex and heavy. So what we have ended up doing is we just have a compromise shape of a wing with a compromise curve in it, and we merely change the angle at which we move this thing relative to the flow. So, so it's the little flaps, right? When we're moving, nope, not quite. When we're moving slower, we change this angle so that we're at a different angle to the flow. Okay. Um, We'll talk about the flaps in a second. It's actually a very good question. So this angle is called the angle of attack, otherwise known as alpha by the Greek letter. And we change the angle of attack of the wing in order to change circulation. High angle of attack, meaning beating into the air at a high angle. That's what we do when we're slow. Low angle of attack, skinning the air when we're fast. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. OK. Now, in order to be able to do that, we can't have a sharp point here. Right, because a sharp pointed thing at an angle to the air, the air is just going to glance off the top. So we have to curve this, the uh, nose of that, and then the air flies smoothly around it at different angles, no matter how you put it into the air. And so fish plus um, ball nose or, or curved nose plus curved surface equals airfoil. Right? Mm -hmm. And this curve that goes down the middle of the airfoil is known as the camber line of the airfoil. Mm -hmm. Now you asked about flaps. Let's talk about that. So it turns out that you can actually build a little bit more circulation into the wing. As you have observed, you have a wing, which is a nice airfoil now, and we're just going to talk about airfoils, right, because we've demystified them. They're no longer a mystery to us. You can say, well, wait a minute. What if I do this? What if I have a part of it that then comes down and does something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So now, instead of the airflow going straight like that, it then actually comes down even more and creates more circulation. You can do that. You can get away with it. However, it ends up, because these are chunks of wing that you hinge out into the airstream, they're not particularly efficient. Hmm. So in general, and that is generally true, some gliders actually change that generality. But in general, you use these so-called high lift devices in specific times, like takeoff and landing, 
but you don't use them when you want high efficiency crews. During crews, you rely on your angle of attack to change how, you're, how much circulation you're producing. Okay. And now, um, the next lesson shall be observing an actual wing and seeing how it behaves.